When we've gathered data, it often becomes necessary to put it into some form that is simple to interpret. With large tables of data, it can be difficult to draw any meaningful information from them without some kind of further analysis. The table here represents data gathered by a pizza delivery service on customer complaints. The table is organized into rows and columns. Each row represents a customer complaint in sequential order, representing the order of complaint it was received. In column A, we have a record for the number of each complaint. We are going to analyze the data using a three-level Pareto analysis. In this video, we're going to use a format in Excel that can be replicated on paper. Pivot tables can also be used in Excel, but we will examine their application later in a follow-up video. Using our data, the first step is to sort it on the highest level category. In this case, it is pizza, pizza defects in column B. Step one is to highlight the columns along the top bar, capturing the whole table. This is done by holding down the left hand mouse button and dragging it across to highlight the table. Once captured, we then go to the top ribbon and select data and sort. Because we've got header column along the top of our table, we make sure that my data header has been checked. We then go to the sort pull down button here and we select defects category, the category we want to sort it in. And we it will be ordered from A to Z. We then click OK and we will see that our data is now sorted. We've got three categories sorted into order in column B. For our data to be meaningful, we need a numerical count for each of the different pizza defects we've got. So I've created a small table here for the three pizza types of pizza defect we can get under pizza defects. There's incorrect pizza, service issue and wrong toppings. Because this data isn't very complex, we could just highlight each of the incidents going down for incorrect pizza. And we would see in the bottom left hand corner, a count number of 47. That means there's 47 incidents of complaints regarding incorrect pizza being delivered. We could then go on and do the similar thing with the service issue highlight all the service issues. We see there's 23 incidents of complaints around service issues. And then we can go on and see with the wrong toppings. Again, it's fairly obvious that this is the highest category in this case, but if we had large amounts of complex data, maybe thousands of bits of data, it wouldn't be quite so easy. And we've got 129 incidents of that there. Well, I've missed one, so it's 130 if we go down and do this correctly. And that's one way of doing it. We could gather data there. Another way is to make an analysis using the function keys. If we've got large amounts of complex data, as I said, we can use the function keys. So we're going to use one called COUNTIF. So we highlight our cell here, go to the function keys, Select count if, and from there our range is we're interested in counting down column B. So we we'll highlight column B, and our criteria, because it is a labeled criteria, meaning it's not numerical, we're going to have to put it into speech marks first. So we've got speech marks, and if we type incorrect pizza. As our category close speech marks and if we click OK we should get the count of 47. We can do a similar thing with service toppings so in this case I'm just going to copy the cells down and highlight it and I'm going to highlight service issue just to save spelling problems control C edit our cell control V hit enter and we've got a count for service issues, which matches with what we had earlier of 23. 
and we do the same thing for wrong top ends. Highlight, Control C, and Control B on the edit, and Enter. Now we can see we've got incorrect pizzas, 47 count, instance of service issues, 23, and wrong toppings, 130. We can just double check that this is good because we can highlight it. And if we look down in the lower right hand corner of our worksheet again, we can see a sum of 200, which matches up with the amount of data that we had. If we look down, we've got 201 rows minus our heading row. So there's 200 pieces of data. Everything matches up and is looking good. Our next step is to create a Pareto chart using the data we've got so far. To do that, we highlight our data that we've got. We go to insert, we go to our charts, and in our charts, we'll see one here, insert statistical chart. We we'll click on that and we we'll choose the Pareto one on the right hand side. And there we have a Pareto chart ready made for us showing that wrong toppings is by far the greatest problem we've got. Now, obviously, as mentioned earlier, this was a simple amount of data we had, but if it was complex and we had thousands of incidents of all kinds of things, this is a good way of showing it visually uh, so we can get a quick interpretation of where our biggest problems lay. It's a good idea just to edit the heading so that we know what we've got and this is pizza defects so that's our first level Pareto analysis done we're going to focus now on wrong toppings because that's our greatest problem if we can hit the greatest problems first we're going to have the biggest impact most easily but we're going to try and analyze what's causing these wrong toppings in the next stage so to progress our analysis, we're going to do a second level Pareto based on wrong toppings. To do this, the first thing is it's good to keep a copy of our initial data. So we're just going to create another copy and we go to the bottom tab, right click, select move or copy, check the create copy box, click move to end and do OK. We've now got and a copy of our data sheet that we've already done. We can now do anything we want with this because we've preserved our initial data. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, because we're only interested in wrong toppings, we're going to delete all the data looking down the column B that is not associated with wrong toppings. So we're delete all the incorrect pizza and service issue data by highlighting the rows. Right click and delete. So now all the data we've got left is to do with wrong toppings. So the next step is to sort it on the second category we want. This is column C under categories. We're going to do the same as we did earlier. We're going to highlight the cells along the top select data select sort check we've got our headers we've got that and we go down in this case we're going to do category we select category we do okay and then we can see that our data is now sorted in column c under categories of wrong toppings Under the categories, there are only three of wrong toppings that we can get. They're excess toppings, missing toppings, or the wrong type of cheese. So again, we make a little table in order to do a count. We could again highlight these because it's a simple table and see that there's four counts of excess topping. We could fill it in there, but I'm going to do the count if function again so it's count if, this time column C, and my criteria is speech marks excess. 
and I say I've got four. Again, I can duplicate this down and I'm just going to edit those. Missing and 46 counts of missing toppings. And the final one, wrong type of cheese. I'm just going to copy that and edit my function. Control V, enter, and we've got 80 counts of that. So to do our Pareto, now we've got our little table. We highlight our data. Again, go into insert, and we're looking for charts. We're going to look at the statistical chart, and we click Pareto. There we are. And we've got another chart this time showing that the highest incidence of our problem is due to the wrong type of cheese and we can see that all our data there we can just double check we've got the right amount again we do a count there's 130 there by checking in the bottom right hand of the spreadsheet we can check that wrong toppings we should have 130 so we know we've captured all the data for good practice we should edit this really and we put um, topping categories. And there we have it. That's our second level Pareto. Our next stage is to go to the third level and examine why we're getting the wrong type of cheese. So to do our third level Pareto on the wrong type of cheese, we repeat our process. It's always prudent to make a copy. So we're going to copy our data again. So we go down to the bottom tab. We right click, move or copy, check the create copy box, move to end, click OK. And we've now got our third copy here. And the only thing I'm interested in is the wrong type of cheese category in column C. So I'm going to delete everything in looking down column C that isn't that. So it's all the way down to missing. Right click, delete. So now the only information we've got on our table is the wrong toppings and the wrong type of cheese. And we're going to analyze these to see what we what's causing the biggest issue here. So the first thing we do is sort our data again. We highlight the table by left clicking. Once we've got our table highlighted, we then go to data sort. And this time we're going to sort by column D on detail. We know we've got the headers there. That's OK. I'm going to click OK. And now we've sorted our data. We can see that there's one, two, three, four. Looks like there's five categories. And we're going to have to make a little table for that. So I've created a table for our detail of the what's causing the wrong type of cheese. And I'm just going to put a countif function in and get a count for each incidence of each problem. So I've now got a count for all of them. I've put the count inf inf function into all of these cells and we can just double check again, highlighting, looking down the sum of the count, it's 80. Our raw data earlier had the wrong type of cheese, 80 count. So we know we've got captured everything and we haven't missed anything. So now just to do our final Pareto, we highlight the cells. We go into insert statistical chart and there we have it. This is our wrong cheese. And for our pizzas, we can see that our, by far our highest problem is having Gouda cheese instead of Gruyere cheese. They must be pretty posh pizzas, I must say. Uh, but having said that, 
that's our biggest issue and that's 47 out of our total of 200 so basically 25 percent of our problems are caused by this one issue if we can deal with this that means 25 percent of our over well, nearly 25 percent of all of our quality issues are going to go away with one simple project so in summary what we did is we took our data table in this case it was fairly simple but imagine if it was quite complex it would be a large job the best way to do it is to sort it into its categories do a count and we get our first level Pareto which in this case was the wrong toppings we used that to show us that if we focused on that we could then drill down into the next level of data and the biggest cause of the wrong toppings was the wrong type of cheese we drilled down further into that and we found that gouda was being used instead of gruyere was the biggest cause of our complaints and by dealing with that one issue we could remove 47 out of the 200 problems that we had uh, and it was easy to visualize that once we've done that we could then repeat the process with the next levels and see where that takes us uh, and that's the best way to focus your improvement resource when you do a simple analysis like this.